Most driving ranges these days, you hit golf balls off a mat. Is that good for your game or is it bad for your game? And what are some of the things you need to be aware of? Well, you've come to the right place because today we're doing a deep dive about hitting golf balls off a mat. I'm PGA Teaching Professional Todd Kolb, Director of Instruction for US Golf TV and the Sanford Power Golf Academy. And I'm here with my good friend, Sam Bossler. Sam is one of our lead coaches here at the Sanford Power Golf Academy. And coach, people are hitting golf balls off a mat. I don't care if, where they live in the world, they're hitting golf balls off a mat. There's some things we need to talk about today. Yeah, we're gonna dive a little bit more into maybe some things that you gotta look for, good or bad, some common injuries you might see, and then just some other questions that are really big to understand about mats. Yeah, so the thing is, is that before we get diving into this, be sure to subscribe to our channel, be sure to ring the bell so you get the notifications, because each and every week we're putting out some great information uh, that's helping people play better golf all over. We love hearing from you. If you got any questions or comments, things like that, be sure to leave them because we do our best to answer all those. But let's dive right into this. The truth of the matter is, is that in this day and age, most driving ranges, the days of just going out there and hitting off this really nice turf, sadly are kind of gone. A lot of driving ranges, they're just hitting off mats. First of all, let's talk about why is that? Why are we seeing more and more golf courses throwing down a mat at their driving range versus turf? So I think for one thing, just throwing down a mat, it's probably more just budget friendly for a lot of people. So it takes a lot of money to upkeep a golf course and grass. So it's just a lot easier for those golf courses to throw it down, easier to take care of. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot more people too. This is, maybe if you're not going to the driving range, but they're hitting golf balls at home. We see in-home simulators. People are hitting golf balls in their garage and doing that. They're taking mats outside and they're hitting them off the, you know, off a mat outside. I don't think my wife wants me to hit balls in my <laughs> yard. Probably not. <laughs> so, I don't, we're just talking about driving ranges first of all, but people are hitting mats in a variety of different places. So first of all, I want to talk, what do you see, how, hitting golf balls off a mat, how might that affect their golf swing? What are some things that they might not even be aware of, but the fact you're hitting golf balls off a mat, it's different than hitting off a turf. Yeah, so a mat first off has obviously, it's astro turf or it's an artificial turf. So when we look at that, you know, if you're hitting off real grass, you have blades of grass in the way. So just the contact in general is going to be a little bit different. So if you're outside and you don't hit it well, you're actually going to maybe have some grass or dirt in between your face and the ball. If we're on the turf, there's actually none of that happening. So that could be looked at as good or bad. But I think the important thing is just to have awareness of it. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you're hitting balls uh, off regular grass, which is what we do, of course, when you play around the golf, there's some things that, that play. So you've got the ball and you've got the club face, and, you know, you can get dirt in there. You can get blades of grass in there. I mean, it could be wet. Yeah, water. I mean, there's all, water, yeah. all types of different things that, that can happen. When you're hitting balls off a mat, you don't have any of that. It's just, sit, it's like a perfect lie. It is. <laughs> every single time. So that's one of the first things you got to be aware of is that I'm not saying hitting balls off a mat is, is a bad thing because we hit balls off a mat at the academy with our students all the time. Okay, but you also need to be aware of it's not the same as hitting off turf. And it moves a little bit too, right? I mean, sometimes depending on the facility you're at, that's one thing too. We're so used to, you know, being able to grip the ground. Sometimes these mats do move and that's yes. something to be aware of, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so well, let's talk a little bit about some things uh, we got a lot of people out here watching this. They love hitting balls, right? I mean, they, they love to hit balls and they're hitting balls off a mat. Are there any things that they should be aware of that, that might cause injury or some things that might be telltale signs that maybe they're hitting too many balls off a mat? So we get a lot of feedback from, you know, we're, we're in a place where we're hitting off mats a lot of half the year, usually depending on where you live in the Midwest. And we get a lot of feedback, whether it's juniors or adults. And a lot of things I tend to see is we hear a lot of pain that's maybe in their wrists, maybe their arms or elbows. And um, why do you think that is? What do you think is maybe happening that's causing some of those, you know, those mild injuries? Well, I think one is, is that as we were talking earlier, you know, the, the mat and the mats are so much better now than they used to be. Um, and we've, we test a lot of mats out here. I mean, we, we, we use mats because we got a lot of people hitting golf balls. Uh, I have found over the years that uh, real feel golf mats generally are the best. I mean, there's a lot of them out there that are good. That just happens to be the ones that we use over there. Jay and his team over there do a fantastic job. Um, but the, the mats these days, they're much more forgiving in terms of, they're not as, I don't know what the word is, they're hard, but there's a little bit of give to them. Yeah. So I think when you're hitting a lot of balls uh, off a mat, of course, you have that impact. And there's not as much give here as there is like on turf. And so you can start to see some things in your wrists, your elbows, it's even seen it in their shoulders. I think the first thing I would say is that if you are hitting a lot of balls off a mat, 
Okay, make sure you got a good mat. Yeah, that's, I that's mean, first and foremost the most important thing. You know, because I, I mean, if you if you, if you're hitting off a really old mat, I mean, you're you're gonna hurt yourself. It's like being concrete. Yeah. So all right, so let's dive into a couple other things here. So what what do you think are? Let's talk a little bit about the difference in clubs. So. You know, I'm gonna throw you a little bit of a curveball because we didn't really plan on talking about this, but we're gonna make sure he's quick on his feet here today. But what is there a difference between hitting irons off a mat versus hitting hybrids versus hitting three woods or drivers? I think the big thing that you become aware of is your ball position when you're hitting off of mat. So um, when you're hitting off mat, the tendency is even if you hit a little behind it or maybe a little down on it, it tends to be a little more receptive and you don't have that feedback tool to know, you know, when you're outside on the turf, hey, I you might actually see the divot fly farther than the golf ball, but when you're on the turf, it is sometimes really hard to know if you actually caught it clean with contact. Yeah. I think I have found that I think hitting balls, uh, when I'm hitting off mats, I think hitting irons is easier than woods. I like, would agree with that. I mean, I, I almost, I don't like to hit my hybrids off a mat. I don't know why. I don't, maybe you have an idea. I, I like to hit my irons off that, but I almost rather hit my hybrids and like my fairway woods off grass. Why, why do you think that might be? I think uh, there's something too off mats. To, if you, if you're more of a steeper kind of down on the ball. That's me. I, that, yeah, I've done the same <laughs> thing, especially early in the season. I do think longer clubs, the, the tendency is just, it doesn't feel right. You know, with an irons, you can have a little bit more of a sweepy feel and have the contact feel pretty similar to normal. Yeah. But those, those longer clubs, long irons, hybrids, they just feel a little different off the face and it feels like the, the turf is gonna be a little bit more part of the, the feedback. Do you think that there's any, um, you know, when we talk about the effects of hitting off a mat, do you think that there's anything that, that our viewers should be aware of as you're watching this? So like we said earlier, if you've got questions about hitting off mats, we're just kind of giving you some of our particular thoughts here, but we're going to answer any question you throw out there. But do you think that there's anything that they need to be aware of that maybe a mat exaggerates or that mats make things look as they are maybe not? Yeah, first off, we've always been through something where you have a great range session or you have a poor range session. Yeah. We know that, that that doesn't always dictate how we actually play the round. So having the awareness of the firmness of that mat. Sometimes we'll go, I mean, you'll go to a golf course and the mat is super hard. And I think even just coming off those mats, whether you hit them good or bad, you just have to be ready that you're actually gonna be hitting off grass here in the next five minutes or whenever your tee time is. So first off, understanding, does this turf have any relation to what the turf's gonna be like? Yeah. And I do think then that's gonna kind of affect just your confidence level and know, hey, this is just more for me to get some golf swings in and maybe get loosened up as opposed to really grind contact. And, and that way I think you're gonna have a little more confidence walking off the driving range. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that 100%. I mean, I think that sometimes mats can give us a little bit of a false sense of reality because you just feel like you're just, oh man, I'm flushing it. Especially with your irons. Doesn't mean you're not, but I'm just saying give you a little bit of a false sense. Um, and then I have seen, I don't know if you've ever seen this, um, have you ever seen people when they're hitting balls off mats where they actually have certain problems that get exaggerated? I mean, I've seen some really good players, I hate to even say this out loud, but I've seen some really good players hitting off mats and they start hitting shanking it. Yeah. And then they'll go hit balls off turf and they're not shanking it. And I'm kind of like scratching my head as an instructor. I'm like, wow, I mean, you know, five minutes ago, we were shanking them on darn mats and now we're over hitting off the turf and they're flushing it. Why, why do you think that might be? That's a great question. I think at the end of the day, contact is such a feel. Yeah. It's something that we really grasp onto. And so it, it just affects our self-confidence. So even a tour player, like you said, you know, something where all of a sudden it gets in your head a little bit that contacts off you get the shanks or something like that. And again, it's just, it's, it's hitting the turf differently. Maybe you're coming down, but it's a lot of just how you're receiving that feedback and it's, it's really affecting the confidence. Yeah, and, and I think also what, you know, when that club is coming in and it's hitting the mat, obviously it, it's, gonna, it's gonna bounce off the mat. I mean, yeah. I hope it does, or you're gonna hurt yourself, right? <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna have a little bit of bounce. And I think when it bounces, sometimes just weird things happen versus if you're a little steep on it at times off turf, it continues to go into the turf, that yeah. makes sense, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it doesn't ricochet back up, and I think sometimes that can cause some off stuff there. So I know here at the end we're gonna give you some specific drills that we're gonna talk about, because I know Coach has got some great drills here that 
we're really good off a mat to kind of address what we're talking about. If you're struggling with that, like, you know, you're right, I started shanking them off when I'm hitting off mats, or I felt like I was flushing it, and then I went and played a round of golf, and I wasn't. We got a couple really good drills that can kind of be almost like a little test to yeah. tell you if you actually are hitting it really well, or if you are actually should be worried about that shank. But all right, so let's dive into a couple more, couple more things here in terms of like, what do you feel are some of the benefits of hitting off a mat? You know, just overarching, then what are a couple of the cons? And I want to get into some, some tips here for him. So at the end of the day, you have to think about if you're hitting off a mat, there's probably a reason why you can't hit off grass. So yeah. for one, just being, you know, in the position to be able to hitting some shots. At the end of the day, when we're hitting these golf shots, contact is the most important thing. So for the most part, if you're making good contact, it's not going to lie. The ball's going to go where it goes. The ball tells us everything. That gives us confidence coming back. So um, one thing I did see too, Ty, I was going to ask you with, with specifically wedges. Sometimes I see, you know, game improvement irons for players that maybe have a little wider sole yeah. or the bounce. Do you see people struggle off mats, you know, when they have kind of those wider sole wedges? Yeah, it's interesting because we've been talking a lot about irons and fairway woods and things. We're going to talk about drivers here in a, in a little bit and, like we said, give you some tips here at the end. But, you know, hitting wedges, because that's where a lot of people hit off mats. Yeah. You go to a lot of wedge areas because people will hit, you know, hundreds and hundreds when they're working their distance control. And so, uh, first of all, I, I really like that idea. We'll come back to that in a second. But what Coach is saying there is at the bottom of the club, the design of the club on a wedge is a little bit different. And if there's more curve on the bottom, which is what we call bounce, and we've done a lot of videos about bounce. I mean, our most popular video we've done was on basically using the bounce correctly and chipping. And it's crazy, it's like three million views. I, I don't know, that, that really rang with somebody there. But at any rate, so when there's a lot of bounce on the club, it tends to bounce, like yeah. we've been talking about. And when you're on turf, it'll tend to dig more. But when you're on a mat, which is already promoting the club bouncing off the mat, because it's a firmer surface, you can really find that people can get into some weird shots, start really struggling. So matter of fact, when we work on our chipping with our golfers, one of the things I love to do is put them on a nice tight mat and make them hit chip shots with yeah. a club that's got a lot of bounce on it because it, it can be a very challenging shot. But what it does is it per really provides an opportunity for learning. So that would be a challenge I might throw out to you there. If you struggle with your chipping, grab your 60 degree, put it on a mat and just start seeing if you can chip off it. And what'll happen pretty quickly is if you have def uh, defaults in your chipping technique, they'll become exposed pretty quickly. Yeah, that's a, you just every single time you're going to be put in these different positions, you know, at some point you may have a hard pan lie if you're hitting off maybe a hard, you know, turf right before your, before your round. So I think that would be a good thing to, to work on. So. You know, yeah. And so I know we have been talking a little bit about what are some of the benefits and the cons of hitting off a mat. So we've talked a little bit about, I mean, one of the benefits I think is you got a nice lie. I mean, that's kind of nice. I that think that's, that's a good thing, right? Um, I think you can, you can hit a lot of balls quickly. I mean, you know, because you've you got a perfect lie. You're not trying to tee it up every time. That's helpful. If you're, if you're short on time and you're like, hey, i got to get some reps in, I think that's good. I also like the fact that you can literally get set up and hit every single ball from the same spot. So okay. as a coach or as a player, if you're working on ball position, if you're working on your setup, if you're doing something with a training aid, okay, you can hit a lot of shots. One of the things that drives me crazy as a coach is like, okay, we're hitting off turf, we got this perfect station set up to work on this drill, and they hit one shot, and I'm like, oh, great. Now I got to move all the stuff again, move the, because the lie's got to be, you know, good again, and I spend my whole darn time setting up a training aid. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it just eliminates one less thing to think about. So you're yeah. just going to have consistency. And there, there are some mats out there that actually have some different alignments on them. Some of them yeah, you see where they have kind of a cross or a T and that helps, like you yeah. said, with ball position, just makes things simpler. So a lot of times hitting off mats, I think can be just a more efficient way before your golf round. Yeah. So I can, th what I would take away from that is if you're going to, if you're going to work on maybe your setup, or you're gonna work on maybe your, well, anything really in your golf swing. And you need to get a lot of reps in and, and keep in mind that your focus is on whatever, your setup or your takeaway. You're not too much worried about ball flight. I think hitting off a mat can really have some benefits. So that's a little bit about some of the benefits, some of the cons, those types of things. So let's talk about, I wanna talk about driver. Okay, then we're gonna, we got some great tips that we're gonna share with you. Coach's got a couple really good uh, drills I hadn't even seen before, but what do you think about hitting uh, off a mat with your driver? 
I actually like it. I like seeing people hit off driver because a lot of times what we see for most golfers is they hit too down on yes. the ball with their driver. So what we call, it's called the angle of attack. So that club's coming down into the ball in kind of a negative way like this. And we, what we tend to like to see is somebody hitting up on the ball as long as some other variables are in place. So when you actually hit off the mat, to me it just provides more of an opportunity to feel like you're sweeping up and hitting an angle of attack up. And that is gonna promote a better ball flight. And for whatever reason, I just see people actually hit driver pretty well off of a mat. I would, I would second that. I, when we hit balls off uh, the mat uh, with a driver, I like it for, well, like we said earlier, we can work on setup. Yes. Right? So we can get the lines out. Some, like Coach said, some, some mats already have them built in there, or you can put your own down, whatever. Um, so if I'm working on a setup thing with, a, with a, one of my students, I like hitting off a mat. Uh, the other thing I would say is like the tee. Uh, this is a mistake a lot of amateurs make. Most of the mats these days, either you can put a tee in it, which yeah. I like, I think that's better, or they have the rubber tees. I want you to talk a little bit about what do you see with the rubber tees, okay? Because we have some of those here at the facility. But one of the mistakes that a lot of golfers make is that they just use the long tee. Yeah. Okay, well the long tee is fine if you're pushing in the turf because you can push it down as far as you want. Then you go hit balls off a mat and they got the thing, it's looked like a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's teed up so it's high. Not down, ideal. And they're hitting underneath it and then they're frustrated. So if you're gonna hit balls off a mat with your driver and you can put an actual wooden tee or plastic tee in the mat, which a lot of them you can do these days, go buy some shorter tees. Yes, short tees are key. Short tees are key, okay, that's a big mistake. What do you think about the rubber tees? Because that's I see that a lot. Yeah, I think the important thing is it has to be what you actually hit with. So if you're gonna practice, the tee height is really important. So at the end of the, de end of the day, the tee is gonna fly, okay? Some of them are stationary, they're fixed, they can stay, but think about the tee height and being consistent with that as when you go out to the golf course. So if it's a wooden tee and you can stick it in, make sure it's the right height. Usually smaller tees are better because those rubber tees are too high for most golfers and we just, we see them go underneath all the time and they get frustrated. Practice how you're gonna play. Yeah. The other thing you know about those rubber tees, it takes a lot of practice to get the ball to balance on there. <laughs> Sometimes, because after they've been used a lot, so anyway, that's a side note. We're having, trying to have a little bit of fun with you, have a little bit of humor at the end of the day. We're talking about golf, we're having some fun. All right, so those are some of the things we talked about with cons and benefits, some of the things you gotta be aware of. A really great discussion here so far. We gotta get into some drills right now, but really great discussion about some things to be aware of when you're hitting your irons and you're hitting your wedges, and hopefully you're finding this beneficial. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to leave comments. We do our best to answer all of those. Uh, but let's dive into some stuff here in terms of drills. Coach, you've got a great drill here with this towel. Let's go ahead and grab that. We'll let you get set up there. Because okay. one of the things that we've been talking a lot about here, I'm going to go ahead and switch spots with Coach as he gets it set up there. But one of the things that we talked a lot about is when you're hitting off a mat, how the club interacts differently than it does on the turf. And uh, Coach just showed me this this morning. I hadn't even seen this before. This is a fantastic drill. Let's, let's have you show everybody. Yeah, so like Todd mentioned, when we come into the golf ball, there's a false perception a lot of times hitting off mats. If you hit a little bit behind um, the golf ball, you can feel like you've actually caught it kind of clean because it's going to actually kind of bounce off and kind of hit the golf ball. So what we've done here is we just have a towel. This can be a head cover. It can be anything, something that hopefully is just kind of flat. You're going to put it about four, maybe five inches behind the golf ball, depending on your skill level. If you're a better player, maybe move it a little closer than that. And the goal of this, again, is just to control the low point. So the low point, again, we're trying to make sure that we're coming in with this club face. And we want to see, we know that most good golfers are going to hit the ball and then take some sort of turf with it or bruise the grass. So this drill is really making sure that we're coming down and making clean contact onto the ball, then the turf, instead of coming in and maybe bottoming out behind the golf club. So it's, it's also working on some good weight distribution, get through the shot. And if we do that, make sure we're avoiding this towel kind of hitting down. We're going to hit a nice clean shot. How was that? That was really good. I was watching that towel. I was like, did oh, I avoid man. It? Yes, you did. That's, I love that drill because the beauty of that is, uh, that's a gem right there, is because if you hit the towel, you know, it's not going gonna, it's, it's to hurt anything or anybody. That's why you're recommending like a towel or head cover, right? Exactly. Something yep. like that. I thought, what I really like about the towel too is it's, it's 
Well, it's, it's kind of lower, like it's not real high, so you can actually probably get it pretty close. I think this might be a drill we could even just use almost off regular turf. I think you can do it for, for any turf. Yeah, it's great off grass. And I think the other thing I see a lot of times with this, Todd, is sometimes off turf, people are really getting after it. They're trying to control it and hit down on it. So what would be a good drill for that, just for people to maybe feel some good, some good rhythm through the shot? Okay, so let me share with you one of my favorite drills here. I'll go ahead and switch spots with okay. you here. Um, and we use this drill a lot. This is, we use it for a lot of different things, but today we're using it primarily for rhythm and kind of tempo and things like that. Um, now, if you've got some other of your own drills that you like to do when you're hitting off a mat, hey, you could teach us something. I learned something all the time from, from our viewers. So maybe there's a drill that you do on a mat that helps you. Put it in there because you can teach us something. So we call this drill um, three equals four. And we call it that because we're gonna make four swings, but we're gonna actually hit three golf balls. All right, so you gotta wrap your head around that a little bit at first. Math gonna, doesn't add up. <laughs> that math doesn't add up. Uh, but we're gonna make four swings, we're gonna hit three balls. Now, what's gonna happen is once you start swinging, we're gonna keep swinging. Now, I'm doing this with my seven iron. That's the perfect club for that. You don't wanna do this with a driver to start. Okay, and they don't need to be full swings at full speed. That's not the point of the drill. The point of the drill is to teach you rhythm and balance like Coach was saying so that when you've been hitting shots off mats, you know that you're making some progress. So what you're gonna do is once you start swinging, you're gonna keep swinging. The first swing is gonna be just a practice swing. And then I'm gonna, on the second swing, I'm gonna hit the first ball and then the second ball and then the third ball. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate it right here. So first swing is just a practice. Then I'm gonna step, start stepping into them. So that's one, two, three, and four. So four swings, three balls, four equals three. That will help you through rhythm in your tempo. Do that drill with like a seven iron, all right? And also make sure that you're not trying to hit full shots because that's really not what you're working on. So we've talked about a lot of stuff here today. So next time you guys go to the golf course, all right, and you start hitting shots off mats, you're working on your game, what do they want to remember? At the end of the day, the mat is going to respond different than grass. So having some awareness, and, and that's going to affect your confidence, I think. So at the end of the day, that would be the number one thing, is just having some awareness of, so you're confident leading, leading off the driving range. There's a lot of benefits to hitting golf balls off a mat. I think it's a great thing to do. You can work on your setup, you can hit a lot of shots, you can get a lot of reps in. Be aware of some of the things that might maybe misguide you a little bit when you're hitting off a mat. And we've covered those things. We've given you a couple of great drills. Thanks for sticking around. We look forward to seeing you next time and be sure to subscribe. But when, what Coach is saying there is, is when the bot, the lack of a better phrase here, we're not gonna dive too deep in this because I'm certainly not a club designer. So some of my terminology might, buy, might not be 100% It's okay, we needed a little I'm break. I'm it like three times. I'm like, I just can't keep it. Well, I was about to tip over here too. <laughs>